The title of our project is Profiting Public Relations, a look at social media use in nonprofit organizations. We chose this topic because of our own interest in social media. There has been some research on social media in recent years, but very little on how nonprofits use it. Therefore, we focused on nonprofits in order to create knowledge. The purpose of our project was to find out how nonprofit PR practitioners are adopting social media and if they view it as credible. Our research employed the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology, or the UTOT, as the basis for understanding adoption of social media use by PR practitioners in nonprofit organizations. The UTOT was conceived in 2003 by Venkatesh Morris Davis and Davis and compiled eight previous models related to technology adoption. Previously, the UTOT has been used in disciplines such as banking, medicine, and education. However, it's never been used in the PR field. Past research using the diffusion of innovations theory informed us that PR practitioners are known as laggards, or the slowest group to adopt technology. Despite the fact that PR practitioners believe online communication is valuable and credible, nonprofit PR tech practitioners are lacking interactive communication between their organizations and their publics. O often, all employees in nonprofit organizations share responsibility for tasks due to limited time, money, and person power for a separate communications department, which in turn impacts their ability to use social media tools. We use the online survey method to easily gather data on a large group of participants. Um, with this, we ran the risk of our email address not being recognized and thus ignored by the busy PR practitioners. Um, we based our questions on the UTOT theory, which explored the adoption and use of technology, um, which we then applied to PR practitioners in the field of nonprofits. We also use a scale of credi credibility to determine whether or not um, people find um, social media to be credible. Our sample selection began by compiling a list of nonprofits from four online lists. Forbes' 200 largest organizations, two Better Business Bureau charity directories, and an independent charity evaluator. Once the list of organizations was established, we then browsed their online press room, press releases, and staff directories for personal email addresses. We came across three issues as we did this. We were forced to send our survey to general company addresses when personal addresses were not available. Some sites only offered online contact forms. And finally, we had to survey employees in PR, marketing, communications, and donor relations since these uh, roles often handle PR and nonprofits. We then left our survey open for four days with an initial invite and a reminder email, and we received a response rate of 25.8%. Of the 409 participants of our survey, only five indicated that they did not use any forms of the 18 types of social media. The average number of social media tools used by one practitioner was 4.99, with email, social networks, video sharing, and blogs most reported. A factor analysis did not represent equivalent variables to Vincentosh et al.'s study, so we adapted the variables into eight factors, named based on the Utah factor most present. These factors included performance expectancy and attitude toward using social media, social influence, effort expectancy, behavioral intentions, facilitating conditions, voluntariness of use, anxiety, and self-efficacy. RQ1A asked whether there were differences in adoption of social media based on gender. We performed a series of independent sample t-tests with each Utah factor comparing males and females. And we found that females scored higher in performance expectancy and attitude, whereas males scored higher in social influence and facilitating conditions. RQ1B asked whether there were differences in adoption of social media based on gender and credibility. And through a series of t-tests, we found that there were no statistically significant differences. RQ2 asked whether there were differences in adoption of social media based on whether the organization has a PR department. And through a series of t-tests, we found that organizations with, D with PR departments are more likely to adopt social media than um, those without them. Finally, RQ3 asked if there was a relationship between the Utah factors and credibility. Credibility correlated with performance expectancy and attitude and had a moderate relationship. And it also correlated with facilitating conditions, voluntariness, and self-efficacy, and had a positive weak relationship. We brought Utah to a new discipline as it hasn't been applied to PR in the past. Our research found that males are more confident that their organizations have the knowledge and structure to use social media, while females consider social media to be beneficial to the organization because it increases, increases productivity while also being interesting at the same time. In addition, PR practitioners are more likely to use social media if they find it credible. 
Uh, a couple other limitations that we ran into were the facts that we didn't define the word use or specify the difference between using social media in a professional versus personal capacity. Finally, we hope this study helped lay the groundwork for some future research as to how adoption of social media has changed by employees since organizations began using it. Um, PR practitioners should be increasingly mindful of um, the effectiveness of social media in reaching publics, accomplishing objectives, and achieving greater success in the PR industry.